In this lesson, we are going to discuss proof by contrapositive. Let us recall that the implication P implies Q is equivalent to its contrapositive, not Q implies, not P. Sometimes, using direct proof of P implies Q is a bit more difficult. So that is why we use proof by contrapositive. How does the proof by contrapositive work? Well, from here, we should start with assuming the negation of your original conclusion, assume not Q is true, and then show that not P is true. Take note that this just means that we are proving not Q implies not P by direct proof. For example, let x be an integer. Prove that if 3x minus 7 is even, then x is odd. This is an example of a problem wherein the original implication is more difficult than its contrapositive. Because here you are starting with 3x minus 7 is even, and then you want to show that x is odd. Let's just suppose that we will proceed with this proof. This is just scratch if you proceed by direct proof. 3x minus 7 is even would mean that 3x minus 7 is equal to 2k for some integer k. But then you want to show that x is odd. So of course you would solve for x here. But when you solve for x here, you would get 2k plus 7 all over 3. And this does not even seem to be an integer. So therefore, it's difficult to get to your goal, which is x equals 2 times an integer plus 1. Correct? So therefore, we proceed by proof by contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this implication? 3x minus 7 is even, then x is odd. It's negation of the conclusion. We want to show that if x is even, then 3x minus 7 is odd. For our proof, again, we start with our assumption that let x, that x is an integer. And then suppose x is even. This is very much similar to the problems that we had in our video lecture on direct proofs. So thus, there exists an integer k such that x is equal to 2k. Hence, 3x minus 7 is equal to 3 times 2k minus 7 which is 6k minus 7. How do we write it as 2 times an integer plus 1? Let's just write it as 6k minus 8 plus 1 so that I have 2 times integer plus 1. So this will be 2 times 3k minus 4. Therefore, 3x minus 7 is... Proving an implication using its contrapositive is one of the indirect methods of proving. Whenever you prove using indirect method, it's best to always guide your reader. Let them know that you are going to proceed by contrapositive. So you can actually insert a statement here. You can say, we proceed by proving the contrapositive, just to guide your reader. So take note that you need to decide whether you will do a direct proof or a contrapositive proof. How do we decide which method to use? Choose the method which gives you the best information to start with. Now, in our previous example, it's easier to work with the information that x is even and then proceed to this expression 3x minus 7 is odd. Instead of working with 3x minus 7 and going to x being odd. Take note that you can also prove this by direct method. So if you really want to prove this using the direct proof, we already know that 3x minus 7 is equal to 2 times an integer k. The key there is to write x using 3x minus 7. So I will use 3x minus 7 
So I will subtract minus 2x so that I will get x, but I still have minus 7 here, so I will add 7. And therefore, 3x minus 7 is equal to 2k, and then minus 2x plus 7, and we can now write this as 2 times, what is that? We write here k minus x, and then I have a 7 here, so this will be 3, so that's 6 plus 1, 7. And this proves that x is odd. However, the key here, if you prefer to use a direct proof, is to write x using the expression 3x minus 7. Of course, there are really problems wherein it's difficult to get the expression using the given expression, as we will see in our next example. Suppose that n is an integer. If n squared is odd, then n is odd. Take a look at the premise here. You're starting with n squared. For your conclusion, you have n. So this is already a hint for you that you should proceed by contrapositive because it's difficult to work with n squared and then getting n. Because if you proceed by direct proof, you would have n squared equals 2k plus 1. Let's say, how will you get n. You would have square root of 2k plus 1. And then again, just like in example 1, this doesn't even look as if this is an integer. So hence, we prove the contrapositive. And what is the contrapositive? Show that if n is even, then n squared is even. Start with our hypothesis. n is an integer. And then guide the reader that you will proceed by contrapositive. You can say we proceed by proving the contrapositive. You can say it here. If n is even, then n squared is even. We are assuming that n is even. Hence, there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 2k, thus n squared is equal to the square of 2k, which is equal to 4k squared, which is equal to 2 times 2k squared. Therefore, n squared is even. You can end your proof there. Next, given an integer x, if 2 does not divide x, then x is odd. You can prove this statement using direct proof or proof by contrapositive. For this lecture, I will proceed by proving its contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this statement? Let me just write it here. If x is even, we are negating the conclusion and then negate the original premise. 2 divides x. So we start with let x be an integer because you have given an integer x here. And again, we will guide the reader that we will proceed by contrapositive. Hence, we assume that x is even, then x is equal to 2k for some integer k. And this is exactly the Definition of 2 dividing x. So since k is an integer, 2 divides x. That completes the proof. Next, let us show that if a is an integer where 5 does not divide a, then 5 does not divide a plus 20. Take note that you have does not divide. You have negated statements here. It's easier to work with statements that are not negated. So again, this gives you a hint that you should proceed by contrapositive. Let us first write the contrapositive. If 5 divides a plus 20, then 5 divides a. Let's start with let a be an integer. And again, we say that we will proceed by proving the contrapositive. So therefore, we start with 5 dividing a plus 20. So thus, there exists an integer k such that a plus 20 is equal to 5k. What is your goal? Your goal is to express a as 
5 times an integer. But look at what you have so far. a plus 20 equals 5k. So you have a is equal to 5k minus 20. And we can write this now as 5 times k minus 4. Insert a sentence here by subtracting 20 to both sides of the equation. We get a equals 5k minus 20, which is equal to 5 times k minus 4. Therefore, 5 divides a. Again, I already omitted the part that k minus 4 is an integer. I am already assuming that my reader can see that fact. Next, show that if 2 divides mn, where m and n are natural numbers, then 2 divides m or 2 divides n. Take note that this is of the form you have P implies Q or R. Your conclusion here is a disjunction. From our previous video lecture, we have seen that we can prove this one by assuming that one of the statements in your conclusion is false and then we have to show R. However, if you do this method, what will you have? You would have, this is your P, 2 divides MN, this is your Q, and then R. You would have 2 divides MN and 2 does not divide M. Then 2 divides N. This is one way to prove this. However, again, since we are studying proof by contrapositive, I will proceed by contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this statement? The negation of an or, or statement is a conjunction. So we have 2 does not divide m and 2 does not divide n. Then 2 does not divide m n. We say that this is just a sketch of the proof because I will not be putting in the sentences. This is not the formal proof. Look at this one. We start with 2 does not divide m and 2 does not divide n. What is the meaning of an integer not being divisible by 2? It means that the remainder when m is divided by 2 is equal to 1. If you recall our discussion on congruence modulo n, an integer m is either congruent to 0 mod 2 or it's congruent to 1 mod 2 because 0 and 1 are the only possible remainders when an integer is divided by 2. However, we already know that 2 does not divide m. So therefore, its remainder must be equal to 1 when you divide it by 2. This is just another way of saying that m and n are odd. And what is it that we want to show? We want to show that 2 does not divide m n or m n is odd. I will leave it up to you to continue the proof. Show that mn is odd and therefore 2 does not divide mn. So that is the proof by contrapositive. Next, let us show that if 3mn plus 2 is an irrational number, then m is irrational or n is irrational. What is our original implication here? 3mn plus 2 is irrational. So that's element of q prime, then we want to show that m is irrational or n is irrational. Again, the premise is more difficult to work with because you already have 3m n here. I prefer to start with m and n. That is why we prove it's contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this? Or becomes end. So m is not irrational, meaning to say there are both rational. m and n are rational, then show that 3mn plus 2 is rational as well. For our proof, we will 
again state that we will proceed by proving the contrapositive. So hence, we assume that M and N are rational numbers. We want to show that 3MN plus 2 is also rational. What is the meaning of a rational number? We can find integers. How many integers do we need? We want to write M as, let's say, P over Q. N is R over S. So we need four integers. We have P, Q, R, S. Such that, of course, the denominator should be non-zero. Q not equal to zero. S not equal to zero. And so we write here. There exist integers P, Q, R, S, T such that Q is not equal to zero. S is not equal to zero. And M is equal to P over Q. And N is equal to R over S. And therefore, we will just plug it in our expression 3MN plus 2. Plugging in these values, we get 3mn plus 2 will be equal to 3pqr over s plus 2, which is equal to qs 3pr plus 2qs. Since p, q, r, and s are all integers, this is an integer and also qs is non-zero because q and s are both non-zero. I will just state that explicitly here. Since p, q, r, s are integers, so is the numerator 3 pr plus 2 qs. Moreover, qs is not equal to zero since both q and s are non-zero. Therefore, we were able to show the 3mn plus 2 is equal to a quotient of two integers with the denominator not equal to zero. So therefore, 3mn plus 2 is rational. That concludes your proof. For our last example, let x and y be real numbers such that x is less than 2y. Prove that if 7xy is less than or equal to 3x squared plus 2y squared, then 3x is less than y. Again, take note that your premise here is complicated. 7xy less than or equal to 3x squared plus 2y squared. It's better to start with a simple premise. So, we will again proceed by contrapositive. What is the contrapositive of this one? We have 3x greater than y. Then, we want to show that 7xy is greater than 3x squared plus 2y squared. CP stands for contrapositive. Take note that you have a hypothesis here that x is less than 2y. So you have x less than 2y here. That is given. Your assumptions are x is less than 2y and 3x is greater than y. And then show that 7xy is greater than 3x squared plus 2y squared. This is just the scratch. We have x is less than 2y. 3x is greater than y, and then we want to show that 7xy is greater than 3x squared plus 2y squared. I will use the backward approach here, and then the forward approach until they meet somewhere. So I want to start here and end up with this. So let me just first simplify this. We get 3x squared minus 7xy plus 2y squared this will be 0. But then what is this 3x squared minus 7xy plus 2y squared? When you factor, I already have an idea that this is 3x minus y, and then this is x minus 2y. But from here, we have 3x is greater than y, which means that 3x minus y is positive, and what about x minus 2y? x minus 2y here is negative. 
that is now the scratch. So therefore, we can now write our formal proof here. So again, let's start with let x and y be real numbers such that x is less than 2y. So we prove the contrapositive and then suppose that, where are we now? 3x is greater than y. Hence, 3x minus y is greater than 0 and x minus 2y is less than 0. So we now have thus 3x minus y, x minus 2y is less than 0. One is positive and one is negative. And then manipulating this inequality, we now get that 7xy is greater than 3x squared plus 2y squared. You can just say here, manipulating the above inequality, we get. And that concludes our proof. We were able to prove the contrapositive of this statement.